Hey everyone, and welcome back to another AP Calculus video. Today we're going to talk about something called the mean value theorem. And the mean value theorem essentially says this. If we have a function uh, where we look at a, a closed interval, so we're only looking from point A to point B, and on that interval, if our function is both continuous and differentiable, it means you can find the derivatives, there's no discontinuities, no weird sharp corners or anything like that on the graph, if you can find the derivative everywhere between point A and point B, then we're, we know we're continuous because differentiability implies continuity. So if it's differentiable, it's also continuous. If those conditions are met and you can find the average rate of change between the endpoints, so the slope between the two endpoints, you are guaranteed by this mean value theorem to find a point somewhere in that interval where the derivative at that point is the same as the slope between the endpoints. And it kind of looks like this. So we're going to call this part here, okay, this is the average rate of change it's the slope between the two endpoints on the interval. This is the instantaneous rate of change. Hmm. So remember, the derivative is the rate of change happening at a single instant. The average is over an interval. And the idea is this. If I look at any graph, so suppose I look at you know this function right here, and I look at um, a point A right here and a point B right here. So here is my closed interval. We're both continuous and differentiable between those two points. The idea is this. If I find the average rate of change, well, that's going to be the slope of this connection point. This is called a secant. So this is the secant between the endpoints. So this is the slope of the secant. And then I am guaranteed by this to find some spot in the middle where the secant slope matches a slope of a tangent. And that spot, we're going to call it C, right? So this is called the tangent at whatever C is, right? So the slope of that tangent is the derivative at C. So this would be the slope of the tangent at x equals c. So the idea is you have a slope of a secant, a slope of a tangent, and somewhere they're going to be the same. That's what the mean value theorem is guaranteeing, that somewhere we reach that. So let's take a look at some actual examples here. So we've got this first example. We've got y equals x squared, and our closed interval is 0 to 2. And we want to find a value for c that satisfies this mean value theorem. So the idea is this. When I look at y equals x squared, first thing I want to do is make sure I know what the graph looks like. I want to make sure that I understand this is continuous, it's differentiable. Remember, it, all it needs to be is differentiable, because if it's differentiable, it's automatically going to be continuous. Um, so here we have our closed interval. So 0 to 2, these are my x values, x1 and x2. So this will be the point 0, 0, and then 1, 2, right there. This will be the point 2, 4, because y of 2 is just 2 squared. So the y value there is going to be 4. So we've got this. Here, here's our setup. So the idea is there's some value c somewhere between 0 and 2, okay, where the derivative at that c is going to be the same as uh, the slope between the the two endpoints. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the slope between these two endpoints. So my slope would be, here's how I'd write it, f of 4, or sorry, f of 2 minus f of 0 over 2 minus 0. Well, that's 4 minus 0 over 2 minus 0. That's just 2, okay? So this slope is 2. So now the derivative, f prime of c, well, I got to find the derivative of my equation. So f prime of x is just 2x. So f prime of c is 2c. So I'm going to plug c into the derivative. And I'm going to solve now because I'm going to say, I'm going to remember that the mean value theorem says this. There's some c such that f prime of c equals f of b minus f of a. 
all over b minus a. Well, that slope is 2, so 2 on this right side. And then 2c has to equal 2. Well, now it should be clear that c is 1. So the value that satisfies this mean value theorem is c equals 1. So at c equals 1, if we were to write this tangent line, these would be parallel lines. The secant and the tangent would be parallel. Remember, when we look at an equation, we look at it in three different ways. The first way we can look at it is like a table of data, so we can look at like a list of numbers. The second way we can look at it is looking at equations, which is what we have here. This is called the analytical way. That's how we solved for one. And then the third way we can look at numbers and the relationship is on a graph. And so the picture of the mean value theorem, the graphical um, explanation, shows these two parallel lines. The analytical way is what we did when we solved for C. So we're combining the two, and I want to make sure I always give you a visual to go along with what we just did. So let's take a look at another fun example. Um, you may be familiar with the movie uh, Back to the Future, right? So Back to the Future has this car. It's called a DeLorean. Um, it has a long sorted history of being involved with a drug ring, but we're not going to hold that against it because it is still kind of a cool looking car. And it was the central focus of the movie Back to the Future. And if you haven't seen it, I don't know what you're doing with your life because you need to go watch those movies. They're really great. Uh, but in Back to the Future, the idea is that you have this DeLorean, and in order for it to go back in time, it needs to reach a speed of 88 miles per hour. Um, so that's what needs to happen. And so what we're going to look for here is looking at this data, is it possible to know, does my DeLorean reach a speed of 88 miles per hour? So the first thing we need to do when we're approaching this problem is we need to recognize that we have a problem with our units. So we need to do a little bit of converting and um, understand what is 88 miles per hour in feet per second because that's the data that we have. Um, so the idea here is that someone went out with a some sort of speed gun, you know, standing at certain distance intervals and they measured the time or they used some sort of slow motion capture. Um, very feasible to expect this to happen. And we want to know, is it going to reach that speed, right? So we need to know what is 88 miles per hour in feet per second, right? So our ultimate goal is we want feet per second. So the way that I do unit conversions, um, I, I don't know, I had a great chemistry teacher uh, when I was in high school, and, and she taught me how to do this. And ever since then, this is how I do unit conversions. I need to change miles. Um, into feet, and then I need to change hours into seconds. And so the idea is I want my hours unit to cancel with my hours. So I need one on the top and one on the bottom. So this helps me know what to multiply by and what to divide by. So then I just need to know how many feet are in a mile. Well, that's 5,280. And then I need to know how many seconds are in one hour, right? So that's 3,600 seconds in an hour. And now when I multiply and divide and do all this fun stuff, I get that this is 129 feet per second. So that's what I'm looking for. That's my um, speed that I need to get. That's the instantaneous speed. So my instantaneous speed so that I can go back in time, assuming that the flux capacitor works and all that good stuff, needs to be 129 feet per second. This is, in my mean value theorem, my derivative, right? F prime of C. Now, we don't know what C is. We, we know that it exists, right? So it's at some time period. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to use this idea that this is a continuous differentiable uh, problem because my car is moving at a smooth speed. It's got an acceleration that is a nice smooth curve. My foot is on the gas pedal driving it along. So we need to assume that this function is a differentiable function which also implies that it is continuous. So the idea is I need to find a place where my slope is going to be, is going to give me an indication that I reach that speed or possibly higher. And so as I'm accelerating, remember I'm starting from a stop, it makes sense to maybe start at the end because that's where assumably I might be going the fastest, right? So I'm going to start with the end and I'm going to use these points and I'm going to find my slope. So the slope here would be uh, the change in y over the change in x. So 700 minus 600 
over 12.3 minus 11.17. So the slope there, the instantaneous speed um, in that last interval is 88.49557522, not miles per hour though, feet per second. So don't get too excited. So I'm going slower there. So maybe I eased off the gas pedal, who knows? So let's try another one, let's back up. And we're gonna try this interval just before the last one and uh, find that slope. Now on that interval, I get up to an average speed just over that, you know, just shy of a one second interval here. I get up to a speed of 131 feet per second. Now this right here tells me, and I can make this argument because I know that I've been increasing in my speed since I started from a stop, I have a continuous function. It's reasonable to assume that because I reached beyond that derivative, that somewhere I had to hit um, that derivative value as I'm, my velocity is, is increasing, right? So based on this, I know that there is a place where I reached an instantaneous speed of 131 feet per second. So it's reasonable to assume that yes, I would also have reached the 129 feet per second somewhere in that interval. And I could keep going um, and I could use any interval really to prove this. Um, but the idea is that I'm increasing. And the uh, another value theorem comes into play uh, also because if I know my velocity was at 131 and I know that uh, in the next interval it drops down to 88, the intermediate value theorem tells me that if I have a continuous function, which if I have a differentiable function, I know that it's continuous and its derivative um, is also going to be continuous because it's differentiable. So because that derivative, that velocity function is also going to be a continuous function, the intermediate value theorem is what I'm actually using to make this argument that because my velocity is 131, my average velocity is 131, it drops down to an average speed of 88 feet per second. I know that I'm going to hit that 129 feet per second mark, at least on the slowdown, probably also on the way up. So this is the mean value theorem. And the idea is that when you take the average speed, somewhere the instantaneous speed will be the same on that interval, provided that you have a differentiable slash continuous function. Remember, differentiability implies continuity. And um, just to kind of drive it home, here's a picture of what we just looked at. This is the DeLorean data. And uh, you can see I plotted the points. And the idea is that when I'm looking at this, uh, these last two points, I was finding the slope between these two points here and then also between these two points. And you can see what's happening because I am speeding up, so my velocity goes faster. So I must have a different acceleration there. I must have hit something where I accelerated quickly. Um, but you can see that this slope does change. And uh, I, pr I, I will definitely have an interval where I can hit that 88 miles per hour, 129 feet per second. So um, let's keep going. Let's see a couple other examples uh, where we can kind of explore more about this intermediate value theorem. So here's a function um, where we're going to take a look at two different functions. We have a value, find a value C on the given interval that satisfies the mean value theorem. So um, we're going to do this exactly like we did with that very first equation. And the idea, remember, is that there's some f prime of c that equals f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So the interval, those are your a and your b values. So we need to know what f of 1 is, and we need to know what f of 0 is, and then 1 minus 0 in the denominator. OK, so let's start out. f of 1 is just going to be 1 cubed minus 4 times 1. So 1 minus 4 is negative 3. f of 0 is just 0. So negative 3 minus 0 over 1 minus 0 is negative 3. So somewhere the derivative is equal to negative 3. So now let's find our derivative. So f prime of x is just 3x squared minus 4. That means f of c our f prime of c is 3c squared minus 4. So now I'm going to set these two things equal to each other and figure out what's the value of c where my derivative is exactly the same as the slope between the two endpoints. So 3c squared minus 4 equals negative 3. I'm going to add 1 over 3, or sorry, add 4 over. I get 1. c squared is 1 third. So c has to be plus or minus the square root 
of one third. But I'm also going to remember I'm on the interval 0 to 1. So the negative value is not included in the interval. Remember, C has to be on the interval. Can't use the negative square root of 1 third. So C has to be positive square root of 1 third. Or if you rationalize your denominator, it turns into square root of 3 over 3. But that's your value of C where we meet this condition. So let's take a look at another one. And then I want to show you a graph here. Um, possibly we'll see if it makes sense to look at that graph. But here's another example. We have the sine curve. So remember our sine looks like this, right? So this is what the graph of sine is. This is 0. This is pi. So pi over 2 is in the middle. So pi over 4 is kind of right there. It's halfway, or it's a quarter of the way through to pi. So when I find this, uh, remember f prime of some c is f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Here's a and here's b, so I need to find f of b and f of a. Well, f of 0 is just going to be sine of 0, which is 0. f of pi over 4 is going to be sine of 2 times pi over 4. Well, that's pi over 2. So that's 1. So here we go. f of b is 1 minus 0 over pi over 4 minus 0. Hmm, okay. So we get 1 over pi over 4, which simplifies to 4 over pi. Hmm. All right, so somewhere the derivative is equal to 4 over pi. So let's find the derivative. f prime of x, now this is a chain rule problem, right? So it's going to be the cosine of 2x, but then I need to take the derivative of that inside function. So I'm going to multiply by 2. That's that chain rule that's coming into effect. So then f prime of c is just the same function with a c instead of an x. And that's going to be equal to 4 over pi. So now here's where I need to remember how to solve these darn things. So I'm, I'm going to start out dividing both sides by 2. And when I do that, uh, I get cosine of 2c is equal to 2 over pi. Okay. And so now, um, at this point, if I can't do anything with this, if I can't find a value, if I can't solve it using my unit circle, here's where I'm going to have to use my, um, my inverse trig buttons on my calculator. So 2c is equal to the inverse cosine of 2 over pi. And so here's where I'm going to pull out my handy dandy calculator. And so here I'm going to use my second button, second cosine, and then 2 over pi. There we go. Get my answer. That's 2c, and then I need to divide that by 2, right? So 0 0.4403, so C is 0 0.4403. So that's the value. We just want to make sure that it's on the, uh, the interval, right? And so if we kind of remember 0 to pi over 4, what's pi over 4? Uh, well, I think we're going to be okay. So 0 to pi over 4. Pi over 4 is 0 0.7853 something. So we have to be between 0 and about 0.7853. Five, well, C is between that value. So here's my value of C. That satisfies that mean value theorem. Now, as I was graphing these, one of the things we want to make sure we understand and, and can look at here is we want to take what we've just done um, and relate it to the graph so we can see what's happening graphically. So now here we have a picture of the graph. This is the function that we just looked at. And um, I have to program Desmos to find a couple of things. So we, here's our derivative. So we're going to call the letter g of x our derivative. And then we need to set our interval. So I have my interval a is 0 and b is 1. So that's the interval that we just looked at. And then the idea here is that if I um, pick a point c to be, uh, you know, I, I want to figure out where c will be the point of tangency, um, Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create these lines. So I've got, this is the line that will go between the two, um, the two points. And so here are the two endpoints that we have uh, on our 
on our interval, so from 0 to 1. So this is the line that goes between uh, 0 and 1. That's the secant. And remember, the idea of the mean value theorem is that there's some value in between where I can create a line that's parallel to that. And so if we um, unmute this point of tangency, and uh, I've created an equation here. So this green equation is my tangent line. And so what we want to do is we want to try to get it to be tangent, right? So we want it to be, um, uh, or sorry, parallel. So we, if we slide C along, we can kind of see, oh, it kind of looks like it's like right there. And uh, you know, if I remember the answer correctly, we found analytically that the value should be square root of three over three or one over square root of three. And uh, if you look and see what that is in my calculator here, uh, it's about 0.577. And so it's clear to see, you know, my C value here goes to 0.6. But if I typed in, uh, let's see if it'll let me, I don't know if it, it won't let me uh, do anything other than these steps here. But if I typed in, let's see if it'll let me do it here. Oh, 0.5, there it is. That's my value that I got. And so we can see that, yep, it is, uh, it's tangent there, nowhere else, but it's tangent right there, so 0.577. So pretty slick. We can also do the same thing. We can change this function to be the sine of 2x. And so there's my points. And remember, we found that that value was uh, something like 0.4, something like that, uh, 0.4. Let's see, we'll flash back here. 0.4403. And so if we do the same thing with this green uh, line here and we look at C, we'll be able to find 0.44. Let's see, 0.44, is that where it's getting? That's pretty darn close. Let's see, 0.44, I think it was 0.403, something like that. And so this is, the idea is that this, oh, and we didn't change our, our sliders. That's why, that's why it looks so funny. So if I change that to pi over, what was it, 4? Yeah, there it is. And there we are. So we had to make an adjustment there. We had to change our interval from 0 to pi over 4 now. And sure enough, there's where my line is uh, going to be parallel. And we can kind of see that it moves, right, depending on where the derivative is. That's my tangent line. So there's always going to be a spot if your function is continuous and differentiable where your tangent line will be parallel to the secant. So the slope of the secant, f of b minus f of a, all over a minus b, or sorry, b minus a, is the same as the derivative at some value in the middle. Now, sometimes we can find that value, and sometimes we can't. Sometimes we're just asked if it exists, and sometimes that's all you need to say. You don't need to find c. So uh, depending on your problem, you may... Uh, be asked to, to, to find different things. Um, I will put a link for this uh, in uh, the video here so you guys can play around with this all you want um, and uh, put your own function in, change your a and your b like we did here and, and see a visual of the mean value theorem in action. So pretty cool and uh, I hope this has been a, a fun video for you, a little enlightening on this mean value theorem. Um, remember you guys, you can do this. Uh, if calculus was easy, everyone would do it. So you are the best of the best and you are challenging yourself and that is something to be proud of. So keep at it and uh, as always, you've got this.